Consider a scenario where the power is out, there's no cell service, and a weather emergency or other serious event is currently happening. How are you going to get and stay informed about that situation so that you and your family can make good decisions that will keep you safe? The National Weather Service has developed an emergency alert and information network that serves over 90% of the U.S. population. This is a critical piece of your emergency preparedness journey. It's imperative that you know how to use this service. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, often referred to as NOAA or NOAA, has developed the NOAA Weather Radio, or NWR. The NWR is a nationwide network of radio stations broadcasting continuous weather information. They broadcast official weather service warnings, watches, forecasts, and other hazard information 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. And it's not just weather anymore. NWR is an all-hazards radio network. It broadcasts warnings and post-event information for all types of hazards, including natural, such as blizzards, earthquakes, or wildfires, environmental accidents, such as chemical releases or oil spills, and public safety, such as Amber Alerts or 911 telephone outages. The NWR broadcasts over seven different frequencies, so let's find out how to access your local station as well as the type of radio you'll need in order to access it. There are some good phone apps that report NOAA weather radio information, although most of these are not free, but today we will focus on the actual NWR radio broadcast because if the power goes out, and the cell towers and internet are down, your cell phone won't do you much good. First, you'll need to determine if your location is covered by NOAA Weather Radio, and if so, you want to identify the frequency. Now, if you determine that you're not in an NWR coverage area, but you still have internet, you can access the weather.gov website and find local alerts and weather information there. The National Weather Service has also partnered with media outlets across the country to provide alerts. So even if the power is out, you may still be able to tune into an AM or FM station that could provide some emergency information. Let's do a quick walkthrough on how to find your NOAA weather radio coverage area and frequency. Now first you'll navigate to the weather.gov or the National Weather Service website. Once here, you'll simply click on the information tab in the menu and then click on NOAA Weather Radio. From here, you can click on the button that says Find My Station, and then simply click on the magnifying glass or the search icon. And at this point, I recommend putting in the zip code of the area you're looking at. Hitting Enter. It will zoom in on that area. And what you're looking for is a green pin representing an active or a working transmitter. In this case, Here's the nearest green pin. It'll give you the call sign of the station, the site name, in this case is Klamath Falls, Oregon. And if I click on this button that says click here for more details, it'll actually bring up a map showing the full coverage of that radio station as well as the frequency, which is very important. You can't do this with a traditional AM or FM radio receiver. You'll need a radio that covers the NWR frequencies as well. Fortunately, there are now a number of emergency radio options available. As this is not a product review, we will simply use a good but inexpensive emergency radio to demonstrate how to access the NWR. We'll also touch on some additional emergency preparedness features that are built into many of today's radios. For those who are deaf or hard of hearing, some receivers are equipped with special output connectors that activate alerting devices such as vibrating alarms, bed shakers, and strobe lights. Let's do a quick walkthrough and demonstration of this popular style of emergency radio so you can learn how to access NOAA Weather Radio, the Emergency Alert Service, and some of the other onboard survival features. Emergency radios can be purchased online or at many big box stores. This particular radio is lightweight, portable, and has a built-in rechargeable battery. This radio can be charged three different ways, through the solar panel on the top of the radio, the USB port at the end of the radio under the protective rubber flap, and the hand crank that is tucked into the back of the radio. 
Simply ensure that the on-off switch located on the right side of the back of the radio is in the down or the on position to allow for charging. One minute of manual cranking can deliver up to six minutes of radio. This radio can deliver up to 20 hours of radio time or up to eight hours of flashlight use on a full charge. That's right, most of these newer radios will include a flashlight. In fact, this particular radio has three flashlight modes as well as a reading lamp. To use either the flashlight or the reading lamp, first, make sure the power switch on the back is in the down or the on position. The flashlight button is on top of the radio on the left of the solar panel. One press of the flashlight button is for the far beam. The next press is for a dipped beam. The third press is a combination beam. And then the fourth press will turn the flashlight back off. The reading lamp is located on the underside of the hinge solar panel. Lift the solar panel located at the top from the back edge to turn on the lamp. As for the radio receiver, this model has four options. Alert, WB for weather band, which is in fact NOAA weather radio, and then the FM and AM options. To operate any of the radio bands, ensure that both of the power switch on the back of the radio is in the down or on position, and the power volume knob on the front of the radio is turned clockwise to the desired volume level. The power volume knob is on the front face of the radio, on the right side, but down and to the left of the tuning knob. The radio band selector is located on the front face of the radio in the center and slides at a 45 degree angle from the bottom left to the top right. The first position for the radio band selector, which is down and to the left, is labeled alert and is for the emergency alert system or the EAS. When the radio is switched to alert and both power switches are on, the radio will stay silent until there's an alert being broadcast by the EAS. If you're actively listening to any of the other three radio bands, an emergency alert will override these broadcasts so you won't miss it. If you have NWR coverage in your area, you can use the tuning knob located up to the right of the power volume knob to tune in to your frequency. NOAA Weather Radio broadcasts 24-7 and for the best reception, you will want to extend your antenna that is located on the back of the radio at the top edge. Let's have a quick listen to the broadcast we're receiving in our current location. 5 to 15 miles an hour with gusts to around 25 miles per hour. For Thursday night, mostly cloudy. Lows in the lower to mid 30s. The third position for the radio band selector to the right and up one click from the weather band is the FM band. The last position on the top right is the AM band. AM FM radio are important, especially if you don't have NOAA radio coverage. They are another possible source of emergency information. There is an SOS or an alarm button located down and to the right of the volume and tuning knobs on the front of the radio. By pressing and holding this button for three seconds, you will hear an audible alarm along with a flashing light. This can be very helpful if you need to be located by emergency workers. Finally, there are two USB ports at the right end panel of the radio if you're looking at the face of the radio. Lift the rubber flap to access the ports. The bottom one is for charging the radio and the top one is for charging other critical devices like cell phones or small medical devices. We highly recommend that you acquire an emergency radio right away and keep it fully charged. This will go a long way in support of your preparedness. Identify if you have NOAA weather radio coverage and what your frequency is going to be using the weather.gov website and searching under the NOAA weather radio tab. Next, you'll want to acquire a radio capable of receiving the NOAA weather radio broadcasts. Consider a multi-use emergency radio similar to the one we demonstrated here today. 
Spend some time learning how to use all of the features of your new emergency radio. Then get and stay informed about weather and hazards that may affect you and your family. This concludes the video on getting informed about emergency radios, NOAA weather radio, and the emergency alert system. Make sure to include an emergency radio in your preparedness kits.